Greetings to all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Warm welcome to each and every single one who's been watching our Kirtana Ministries videos from the last few months. As, as it has been encouraging for us to do this video ministry from the last few months, it's been a blessing to us as a family. I hope that many people who's been watching these videos, hopefully it will be a blessing to you as well. Last Sunday, we have seen the topic how to resist the winds or storms in your life means how to face the problems in your day-to-day -day life that was the topic that we had gone through for this Sunday the topic is this doing right things at the right time means another way around when is the right time for doing the right things for example, like if you want to if you want to 
do uh, do your business in your life, or if you want to go for a new job, or if you want to start something new in your life, or if there is a change in your life, or if you want to move to different place or location, how to handle these sort of things. That is the topic that we're going to see for this Sunday. As it says, like do right things at the right time. That's the today's topic. If we say in reference in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 6 onwards, for there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. Though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him, since a man knows the future, who can tell him what is to come? No man has power or the will to contain it. So no one has power over the day of his death. This is it. It's Solomon, King Solomon, son of David, wrote this Ecclesiastes. As I repeated this, chapter 8, verse 6, for there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. It's very, very important. For you to do a new thing in your life, or for you to start a new job, or for you to do a new business, or for you to start a new company, or for you to start a church, there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. Though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him, since no man knows the future, who can tell him what is to come? Because we don't know what lies in the future. We don't know the consequences. Like if you want to change your job, you don't know what is going to be your future. Or if you want to be in a new place, you don't know how the people are going to be. Or if you want to do a new business, you don't know the future of that particular business. But how to do these things at a right time? That's more important. We need to understand this. Doing the right things at the right time. As it says, like whoever, for there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. So what is the proper time and what is the proper procedure for you to do start a new thing in our life, for you to start a new business, for you to start a new uh, job, for you to go to a new place, for you to go and settle in different parts of the world. So what is the process? In, in normal way, like you know, for you to go to a broad like that you follow some procedures. Means that is process that we need to get a visa on, and then, then that's where you can go to uh, different parts of the world. But for that, you to get a visa, then you need to follow some procedures, you need to have proper qualifications. That's how you end up in, in going to different places, in different location. But you don't know the future, how it is it's going to be after that, once you land it into different place. So what is, the, what is the procedure for you to do the right thing at the right time? If you see in, in, the, in chapter 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 11 onwards, the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain. In the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper, and Eliza heard it. He pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. This is, this is the first thing we need to do when you want to 
start new things in our life. It says very clearly, First King chapter 19, the Lord said, go out and stand on a mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. So what's more important for you to do right things means when you want to take a major decision in your life, the presence of the Lord is most important thing. You need to spend a lot of time in the presence of the Lord. That's the first and foremost important thing. It says like this, first in chapter 19, verse 11 onwards. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Eliza heard it, he put his cloak over his face and went up and stirred him out of the cave. This is it. What's going to happen in your day to day life? You spend most of the time, for an example, like a lot of noisy places. Like if you spend the whole day uh, in, in watching a lot of news or media, that means you won't see the presence of the Lord. As well as if you spend a lot of time with other people uh, not knowing or what you want to do in your life, even then you don't see the presence of the Lord. So that's only where you've got to be alone. That's it. Spending a lot of time with God all by yourself. When there is a peace, when there is a calmness, as when there is no sound at all, when there is kind of no sort of disturbances, or when there is no sort of big gathering, so when you go to theatres or when you go to public places, you see there is a lot of noise, you see there is a lot of disturbances, means when you do not have a focus for you to uh, spend alone time with God. What's most important is this, having the presence of the Lord all by yourself when you are in calm place. Then you will hear the whisper. As Eliza hear the whisper of the Lord, you will be able to hear. That's going to happen only when you spend a lot of time in the presence of the Lord. It's more important for you to do a good thing or right thing or for you to do a major thing when you want to start a business or when you want to start a church or when you want to uh, move to a different job. You need to listen to the word of God or you need to spend a lot of time in the presence of the God. It's been very clear. And the second thing is this. If you see in Romans, or the, like if you see in Proverbs 11, 12 and 15, a wise person listens to others. And then a foolish person, he doesn't listen to anyone. This is again the most important thing. Means what's more important mean, what's more important is this spending a time with wise people. Not with the people, not with the foolish people. When you have a good support of people with knowledge, with a lot of knowledge or with a lot of wisdom, that's where you will get good advice. Taking a good advice from the wise people. But if your dependency is on everyone, not spending with the right time with the right people, that means you will be misguided. That means you will be misused. That means you will be exploited. It is very, very important. You're not choosing the right person for you to grow together. Any part of the life, if you want to get a right advice, you've got to be having the right companion in your life. A wise person gives you a wise advice. And if you are with a people of foolishness, then there is always a chance that you will be misguided. And there is always a chance that you will be misleaded. That is what is being happening nowadays 
a lot of times like you will be spending time with the people who do not have any knowledge. A lot of time you will be spending time with every single person and then you will be doing worldly things. When you are with the people who do the worldly things, then you will get the right advice. The right counselling you will never get. Or even if you get that right counselling, that particular counselling will benefit to that person, not to you. It's more important to be with the right person for you to grow in your life. It is most important for you to be with the wise people and it is more important for you to be having the right counselling in your life. That's where you do the right things in the right time. And the third thing is this, Paul wrote to Romans chapter 15 verse 13. Urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be rescued from the believers in Judea, and that my service in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there. Paul wrote to Romans like this in chapter 15, verse 13. I urge you, brothers, by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. That's most important again, praying to God and asking other people to pray when you do the right thing. When you, when you are with the right people or when you are with the right companion, when you are with wise people, then it is always good to ask them to pray for your, for your thing that you want to do in your life. Or you've got to pray to God. That is what Paul said. Paul is the one in New Testament when he keeps going to different congregations, Ephesians, Colossians and Galatians, when you go to Timothy and all other places, what he always says, pray to God for, for, for the welfare of the people and for the knowledge that you want to share with others, he always goes and tells to every single one. He's going to share. He will share his experience first thing first. And he will ask every single congregation to pray for him. When you pray and when wise people pray for you, when other congregations will pray for you, and then you will get an answer for the thing that you want to do in your, in your life. So three things. One, when is the right time to do the things at the right time? How do you know that? When you spend a lot of time in the presence of the Lord, then you will definitely hear the word of God. And second thing, when you have the people of wise companion. And the third thing, when you pray to God, or when you ask some congregation to pray for your welfare, or for your for your knowledge or for, for you to share the things to other people. These are the things that are very, very important. See, in the olden days, God in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, what Jesus done, he tries to identify himself through a prophets or through a people. See, from Genesis to Malachi, if you see everything, from, uh, from the time of Abraham, or from the time of Moses, or from the time of Job, or from the time of Samson, or from the time of all the prophets we have in the Old Testament. God had, God wants to reveal himself to prophets. God wants to identify his presence through some sort of people. That is what happened from uh, in the Old Testament. Every single time, the Father, the God, when He wants to reveal Himself at the time of crisis, or when this Israel was at a slavery of for 400 e years, and then God chosen Moses. So that 
His glory will be revealed. So that he, his name will be revealed to the whole nation. And then through the Moses, and these people went to their promised land. Similarly, David, King David, God chose David to glorify, to make sure that God is there with David. And that's how nobody thought that he would become a king. But God's plan was this. At the age of 17 itself, he chose him to be a king for Israel. So that's how. But in those days, in the Old Testament, those days when he wanted to reveal himself, he uses the people until the time of the, and there is a pause for 400 years and then David thought that like you know he won it because Jesus the God is not revealing anymore but this time in the New Testament in Matthew it says very, very clearly Jesus the God himself he himself came to this world from heaven to earth for every single mankind so that his presence so that his presence will be revealed publicly to every single one so we've got so loving so true God in our life his presence will be publicly open so that is why in the New Testament he moved on to different places so that every single one will feel the presence of God because in the Old Testament he, he was revealed by prophets in the New Testament he himself Father he himself sent his son to this world for every single mankind so that you and me will be saved so that you and me will have an eternal life so that you and me, you and me, the sins will be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed on the cross 2,000 years before. But unfortunately, in those days in the Old, Old Testament, many people do not believe about the Father. Similarly, even in the New Testament, when Jesus was doing many miracles, even then, many people are getting doubt on him. So the problem is even today is this, people are not believing about the Holy Spirit. Because that is the main problem, why there are not miracles, why this, the, the whole mankind is still not able, able to successfully preach the true gospel. It says, in those days, in the Old Testament, people are not able to believe about the Father. In the New Testament, even though the God came to this very world from top from heaven to earth, even then some people are always having a doubt about the miracles in those days what he used to do it, greater miracles like lame walk, blind sea, deaf ear. Even then, people are not able to believe him. If you see this uh, reference, John 11 verse 54. Jesus said that is the reason why I said all these things because of this unbeliefness. In John 11 verse 54, therefore Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. Jesus was so upset. Jesus that is the reason he decided Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews because he done greater things among the Jews. The kind of miracles probably none, none might have seen it. None might have heard it. Probably none he raised the people who was being dead, like Lazarus. Many people we've seen multitudes of the people follow Jesus when he was on this earth. But one section of the people thought that he is threatened to them for their kingdoms. That was the reason they wanted to kill him. 
So that's, that's the thing. When this is the most important thing. In John 11 verse 54, therefore Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews, instead he withdrew to a reason near the desert, to a place called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. That is, that is what it is going to be. When he don't believe the things that is being written in the Bible, and when you don't depend on the God, or when you don't believe the presence of the Holy Spirit, and then you won't be directed to do right things in your life. As Jesus himself decided to no longer move into public places because of their unbelief. When there is unbelief, when there is no faith, and then the manifestation of the God, you cannot see any manifestation of the God. You cannot see major breakthrough in your life. You cannot see major changes in your life. For you to have the manifestation, for you to be a greater testimony for Jesus, for you to be succeed in your life, for you to be victorious in your life, for you to be a great warrior in your life, you should have this Holy Spirit presence. You should believe that the same God who's been doing miracles from 2,000 years, we've been worshipping the same God, the God is same yesterday, the same, He was the same before, and He is the same today, He will be the same tomorrow as well. When you believe that 2,000 years before, the lame walk deaf, hear blind, see dead people raised, when you believe that these things happen only to God, and when you have a faith that when you want to do right things in your life, that your God, the God that you believe, the God that you have a faith, and that God is going to lead you, and He is going to give you a success. Whatever you do, you will be victorious in your life. It is only happen when you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Until unless you do not see the presence of the Holy Spirit, then, then you cannot. You cannot be successful in your life. Because in those days, people do went, multitudes of the people followed Jesus because He is teaching. His teachings are very, very significant. His teachings are very practical. His teachings are helpful to many people to come out of their problems, to come out of their sinful life, to come out of their whatever crisis they have been going through in their lives. That was the reason people followed him. Not because he was telling jokes, not because he was telling some stories, not because he's asking people to do the things what he wants to do. He is giving guidance for the whole man time how to lead their lives. Unfortunately today, many people don't believe on these things, so they follow the people who just talks about stories, who just tells about uh, manipulation stories, so who talks about jokes and who talks about the things that they want here, or many people just who pleases the people and then they, they are with those people. This is the thing, unfortunate thing that we've been saying in today's life. But Jesus wants you to, 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 to be spending time with His presence. When you spend a lot of time in His presence, like in the olden days, many prophets done it, when they spend time by themselves, all by themselves, cried out for God when there is a problem. And then Jesus revealed, the Father revealed to them, and then He led those people victoriously, and then those people were very, very strong testimonies in their life. Similarly, as you and me were, as you and me in today's life, as how those days, People used to spend a lot of time in the presence of the God. People asked 
to be having the right wise people companion and people ask to spend our time in prayers. When you do all these things, and then you will hear the whisper of God. And then when you hear the whisper of God, then whatever you do, what are the plans that you want to do in your life? When whatever you want to do, the business or whatever you want to do, the church thing, whatever you want to do, the job thing, or want to go to abroad, or want to do something, whatever you do, his presence, his Holy Spirit presence will always be with you, and then you will be a more stronger testimony for him, for his glory alone. Let's go to this topic by our small prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for having this wonderful time, for giving this wonderful time. Thank you, Lord, for having Holy Spirit presence around this place. Let the people who's been watching these videos, let those people spend time in the presence of the Lord, so that they will be revealed that you are the true God. So that whatever problems they are going through in their lives, they will come out of those problems victoriously with the help of Holy Spirit. Let the people who has been trying to do good things or right things, or let the people who's been who has been confused when they want to do right things or when they want to change their lifestyles or when they want to do the things for you. Let those people spend time in prayer. Let those people spend time with wise people so that they get the right counseling, so that they will be getting the right help at the right time. We also pray for the people who's been suffering with COVID-19 from last one of you. We pray for those people who has been in the ventilators. We pray for the people who are in this world in beds. Heal those people by your blood. Heal those people so that they will cover those beds. So they cover those ventilators. So that they will proclaim that you are the living Lord. You are the only living Lord that that is going to heal the sick people so that they will give strong testimony and they will live for you, for your glory alone. We also pray for the ministry that we are doing. Help us, give us knowledge, give us wisdom so that we can get many lost souls. Give us knowledge so that we can serve you selflessly so that we can get many souls many lost souls who's been broken in their lives who were lost in this world who's been deceived by these devil schemes who's been heartbroken in their lives let those people transformed by the presence of the Holy Spirit so that there will be as greater testimonies that will proclaim that Jesus is the living God. And Jesus is the only hope. When there is a darkness, we believe that there is a presence of your light. When there is a disciple schemes of devil, we believe that you are going to break the bondages of those schemes. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you each and everyone who's been watching our Kirtana Ministries videos from the last six months. And we recently started our physical presence in Chelmsford. The people who are living in and around Chelmsford, you can log into our Facebook page or website so that you know the physical address as well. Uh, well I warmly welcome each and every single one who wants to visit, visit us. Then you can join our Sunday service at um, Billy Community Center every Sunday at Opus 12. Thank you for watching our videos. Do subscribe and share our videos to all of your friends. Thank you. Thank you very much.